In this video, I will reveal this month's biggest risers and fallers in the FTSE 100 and all the key dividend dates for the month ahead. This is not financial advice, please do your own research. So who are the biggest risers in the FTSE 100? At number 5, up 6.4% is Imperial Brands. The company's financial position has improved recently, reducing debt from £11 billion to £9.7 billion. New Generation Products saw a revenue growth of 8.7%. Tobacco companies tend to cope with inflation quite well because they can raise the prices of their products and consumers are likely to continue buying. The company has continued to raise its dividend, which are relatively sustainable with a cover of 1.5 times earnings. The yield is 7.6%. At number 4, up 7.5% is Unilever. The shares of this fast-moving consumer giant look historically cheap. Unilever is the second largest holding in my portfolio, and this year alone I've bought over £7,000 worth of shares. If I could only invest in one UK company, it would probably be Unilever. Not only does the company pay a reasonable dividend, but it grows the dividend year after year. Inflation is always a concern, but this company has strong brands and is able to raise selling prices to offset input costs. Analysts expect a bounce back in earnings in 2023. Dividend yield is 3.9%. At number 3, up 8.4% is the cybersecurity specialist Avast. The company is eyeing up an $8 billion merger with Norton in one of the largest of its kind in the antivirus industry, as it will cater for more than 500 million customers if the merger is approved. Dividend yield is 2.6%. At number 2, up 8.6% is BAE Systems. This company is in the defence and aerospace sector. The shares had been going sideways until the events of 2022. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has driven the share price up 57% over the last 12 months. Not only does war unfortunately extract an enormous human cost, but billions of pounds of defence equipment needs to be replaced in the coming years. Dividend yield is 2.9%. Now, just before I reveal this month's highest riser, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future updates. And the highest riser this month, up 13.2%, is Melrose Industries. Melrose supplies components to the aerospace and automotive sectors, and it's been on a bit of a winning streak. It recently launched a share buyback program after agreeing the disposal of its American business, Ergotron. When a company buys back some of its own shares, the number of shares in circulation is reduced, pushing up the share price. Dividend yield is 1.1%. And now for the biggest fallers in June. At number 5, down 17.3% is IAG, the owner of British Airways. The shares have not been kind to investors and the falls just keep coming. The price is down a whopping 38% over the last 12 months. To add to the problems, Heathrow Airport, unable to cope with demand, has had to cut flights and there are continued concerns over potential strike action. UK household income has fallen for the fourth consecutive quarter, meaning less disposable income, which is bound to have a negative impact on travel. However, despite these problems, demand for travel is strong. Do you think the prospects outweigh the risks and is IAG a bargain? Let me know your comments. IAG do not currently pay a dividend. At number 4, down 17.3% is Aberdeen PLC. This global investment business has seen its shares fall 34% so far this year. The company has recently completed a £1.5 billion takeover of the retail investment platform Interactive Investor. Aberdeen has a healthy financial position and expansive ambitions, so could these low prices be a bargain? Dividend yield is 9.5%. At 
At number three, down 18.4% is Ashton Group. This equipment rental company is facing severe headwinds. Current soaring inflation coupled with the rising costs of raw materials and the cost of living crisis has placed economies around the world under pressure. Building and construction will be affected by this and there is a worry that Ashtid's products will be sat around unused rather than being hired out. Despite these worries, Ashtid has presence in several key economies including the US and has performed well historically. Dividend yield is 1.9%. And number two, down 19.4% is Anglo-American. Metal prices have fallen recently, aluminium and copper touching year lows, zinc and nickel not too far behind. The health of the world economy is having a negative effect as well as oversupply in some regions. Mining shares tend to be highly volatile, so tread with caution. Dividend yield is 8.5%. And the biggest fall of this month, down 22.7%, is the copper miner Antofagasta. In addition to copper prices falling to a 16-month low, there has been a wave of recent worries for this company, including threats to production, power cuts and drought. The slowdown in China has also had a negative bearing on profits. China is the world's biggest consumer of copper, but it's starting to put COVID-19 worries behind it and this could perhaps be a turning point in the fortunes of Antofagasta. Dividend yield is 10.5%. And now for the ex-dividend dates for the month ahead. Seven companies go ex-div in July, and if you hold the shares before this date, you will receive the dividend which will be paid to you on the payment date. As an example, I actually hold 729 shares in SSE, and so on the 22nd of September, I will receive 60.2 pence for every share held, which is a total of £438. And now for the payment dates in July. There are 17 companies paying out in July and the only one in this list I currently own in my dividend portfolio is GSK. They pay out 14 pence a share at the start of the month. I have just under 1,200 shares, so I will expect to receive a payment of £165. If you want to see my total passive income month by month, then click on the link up here. It's all tax free as I make use of a stocks and shares ISA. Now, just for interest, here are the highest yields in the FTSE 100. Rio Tinto remains the highest payer with 13.6%, closely followed by the house builder Persimmon at 12.5%. There is usually more risk of a dividend cut with higher yielders. So as always, please do your own research. The FTSE 100 average yield stands at 3.9%. I prefer to invest in companies within the 3-6% range. Please give this video a like if you found it useful. See you next time and happy investing!